Kayla, Kayla P. I think I called you Klap last week, which is fun. Um, is it okay to do a tilt test and a stress test with pending CSF leak diagnosis? Uh, reason for the question is because cardiology wants me to make sure to continue with the test. But when I contacted the ENT, uh, they had no restrictions. So that's a good question. So with the CSF leak, what you're worried about is you've got just a perforation in that dural system that holds it all in there. There's a pressure amount that comes with that, um, that you want to make sure is reasonable, too much pressure or alterations in the pressure can be symptomatic. Leaks are tough to find because it's usually just these little pinhole leaks. Uh, and actually tilt table is one of the ways we discover that because you can see what differences change without any muscle contraction in the body. When we put you in different positions, obviously, um, being able to look at that tilt table response helps with identifying if it's a leak or not. A lot of people, the CSF leak, the suspected leak gets put on the list pretty early on, but you're not able to really diagnose it in a really great way unless we're looking at some opening pressures. So you obviously you're going to talk to the physician, see what's comfortable, see what's comfortable for you. But a lot of times those two tests aren't tests that they necessarily um, would contraindicate for, but you just want to check and make sure it's a really good question to ask. Generally speaking though, is one that, that people can do and is actually useful. Um, even with suspected CSF leak, a lot of suspect, this suspected leaks aren't actually leaks too. So just keep that in mind. Not medical advice, just sharing some thoughts. <laughs>